Hey world, it's your girl Nina Love. Thanks for being here. This is my regular Wednesday video podcast. Every Wednesday I sit down and talk about different topics, usually suggested by you, the viewer. So thank you for your feedback. I really appreciate it. If you don't already subscribe to me, facebook.com slash love Nina Love, go ahead and like it, click the thumbs up, or follow me on Instagram or Twitter at love Nina Love. This week's topic, I'm going to do three things, three things that I learned from my parents' marriage. My parents were married on September 11, 1971, so their anniversary was just the other day. So <laughs> I just wanted to honor them because, you know, my father is still alive. My mother passed away in 2011, but my father's still here. So he should hear, be able to hear these stories about him, too recollections from my own thought process and so three things that I learned from their marriage that I really should implement moving forward as a single woman <laughs> so first first thing number one they had a couple of common traits that bonded them the common traits that I observed being raised by them and coming up in that household and even now as an adult that I, I look back and realize was so much a part of them that is now so much a part of me is um, my parents were really hard workers. They, my mother had two jobs for I don't know how many years. So she would be gone from like seven in the morning till midnight. She would go to her first job then her second job, her second part-time job at the, the second part-time job actually had so many perks because she worked at the theater, <laughs> which was so cool because I got to go to the movies for free. Um, so, and my dad worked long hours. He didn't even have a set schedule for years. He, he drove um, a tour bus when I was younger. And so sometimes he would be gone 18 hours of the day, you know, because there was no set schedule, depending on his route that he had to do, whether he had to go uh, take tourists to PCC or to Arizona Memorial City Tour, Circle Island Tour. Like there's tons of things. And so they were really hard workers and um, they used to get on us all the time. My mother was very, you know, like we had to get up at the crack of dawn, even if we was out all night the previous night before. She we would get up. She would get us up on Saturday mornings and we would clean. She was like, you can go back to bed after this, but nope, you're going to get up in the early morning and do your chores. And I remember, anyway, I remember being so, I always wanted to do yard work. I hated being in the house doing um, inside work. I wanted to clean the yard, <laughs> but that was always for my older brother and my pops to do. And I had to do the inside. And you know what my mom used to make me do is iron pillow cases. After they would, and we didn't, we didn't have um, a dryer. We didn't have a dryer until I was way into adulthood. My mom did not have a dryer until I was into adulthood. So I had to hang the clothes on a clothesline all of my life. And I actually find it very therapeutic, but I haven't used the clothesline in forever. Only when I'm at their house. <laughs> But that was a common trait between my parents is that they worked really, really hard. And I feel like they passed that trait on to us. Another thing, another common trait that they had that bonded them is that they both had big hearts. They would take in everybody's kids. <laughs> uh, even my friends, some of my friends would stay for weeks and months at a time at our house. or And our house is very tiny. I don't even know what the square footage is, but my father's house is small. <laughs> and my grandmother and my great grandmother lived with us for a good chunk of change. And that was my mother's mom and my mother's grandmother that lived with us. And um, so we, we always had kids in the house or people in the house. Like our house w was so tiny, like and we was pushing 13 people at once or, you know, like it was a lot. And there's, it was a three bedroom to, it, it is a three bedroom, two bathroom house. So there's no privacy. I grew up no privacy whatsoever. There was no personal space. 
none. So imagine going, being a teenager and not having anywhere to, to really just be. There was nowhere. But it's their big hearts. You know, like my mom would, um, she would give everything. My, my dad too, like the clothes off their back, whatever money they got, if you needed it. Even now, my dad, I don't know if it's because I'm a single woman out here by myself, no longer married, but he's always, babe, I put money in your account. Babe, I cash up you $200 or whatever. It's, I really appreciate it. <laughs> but I just think, I don't know if there's guys out there that are like that. Like, I think maybe my older brother might be like that as he ages too, that he'll be as generous as my father is when his daughters are are um, grown but I have not come across that kind of guy in uh recent you know since my divorce and I, I don't, they don't make them like my dad anymore they just don't um and so those are the things like if I'm looking for another relationship there's certain things that I want common traits with that person with that man I that I hope are similar to the way my parents work together and I know it couldn't have been easy you know I've been married twice and divorced twice so I I know the dynamics in marriage you know and it couldn't have been easy but those two traits seem to have bonded them that they had big hearts and that they worked so hard um so that's number one they had common traits the second thing I learned about their marriage is that they evolved with each other. So I think I was getting married. Um, the, my first marriage, my first wedding was a big wedding. I mean, like with the cake that was 22 tears. I mean, it was, it was a big wedding. My mother was like, she pulled out the stops, but the thing that happened right before or, or in the year from when I got engaged to when I got married is both of my parents lost their jobs. So here I am, 21 years old. They both lost their jobs. Who's going to pay for the wedding? You know, and, and she was so determined to make my wedding like a dream wedding or, you know, like to make it a, my fantasy wedding, which I don't even... I don't even know what the big fuss is about big weddings because it's so stressful. <laughs> so stressful, in fact, that in my second, the second time I got married, we eloped. But uh, they lost both of their jobs at the same time with my wedding coming up. And it was just a tough time. And to see my father and my mother go through it, they had to really stick together, you know, like they... There was transition happening in their life and um, they just had to stick together, you know, and they had to grow and change with each other. And I'm sure that's happened several times. They got married. They're learning to readjust when they got married. They had my older brother, you know, then they have to readjust to parenthood. And then they had me, you know, readjust to two children in the household. One who is a loud and crazy girl like me. <laughs> um, so, you know, and the, one of the things I always... I tell this story all the time to um, people that I just meet, you know, like if they ask what is the craziest thing I've done or, you know, like what are some interesting facts about you? And I remember me getting on a plane. I didn't even tell my parents and me and my BFF, she was, I featured her in a video a couple videos ago. She and I got on a plane, only $150 between the two of us. That's all we had after we paid for our tickets, got on the plane, we flew to Oakland, California, only $150 in our pockets between the two of us. We got on a plane. I didn't even tell my folks. I just packed up my bags and snuck away. And um, <laughs> we landed in Oakland and a, a good friend of mine who still lives out there, he still lives there. There's a bunch of them that were going to college out there, but one in particular still lives in, uh, near Oakland, California, in the Bay Area. And um, they picked us up from the airport. And then at that time, there's no cell phones. We didn't have no cell phones. I had to get a calling card to call home from a payphone or a call from somebody's house. So 
when I called home, my mom was like, where are you? I've been looking for you. Like, I've been looking for you for the past couple of days. Where are you? And I was like, Oakland. She was like, California? I'm like, yeah. And she was like, what in the world? It was November 1994. It was like the end of October. Yeah, it was like November 1994. <laughs> I, I'm 19 years old. Boo Boo's 19 years old, my BFF. And we, was, we had no kids. We were single. We was just doing our thing. Anyway, she was so stressed out after that. And she was like, I don't know what you're doing. I can't, you know, like, so I know that had to cause a rift between my parents. Or cause some, you know, like a lot of worry and heartache between both of my parents. And yet they, you know, they maintained their relationship and evolved with each other. Even though I was causing stress. And I mean, there's tons of stories like that that I can tell about me doing something crazy. And my parents coming to the rescue. Or my parents thinking, oh my gosh, what's going on with my daughter? There's tons of stories like that. Fortunately, my older brother is the exact opposite super obedient, super hardworking, and, and a man of his word, and just so good. My older brother is so good. He has no, I don't know. He's so good. <laughs> He's so good that they were not prepared for me. My parents were not prepared for my craziness, but um, there's tons of stories I could tell about how they had to really evolve around me and maintain their relationship or I would drive them bananas. And I'm sure it's the same way with my younger siblings too. So, cause we are not as good as my older brother is. <laughs> so that's number two. So number one was um, common traits. That's what I learned from my parents' relationship is that they had common traits that helped to bond them. And number two is that they evolved with each other through all the changes that happen in life and they they you know evolve together which is a beautiful thing and you know so many couples fall apart you know they grow apart in fact um this uh when I my ex-husband and I split that's one of the things he said was a reason for that he wanted to leave that he wanted a divorce was that he felt like we grew apart I didn't feel that I felt like we were going through some kind of a funk, but that didn't make me less um, less committed to the relationship. You know what I mean? Like I, I felt like I was still in there and that we were in a funky place, but I didn't feel like I put us in that place. You know, like he wanted to leave. He was he was choosing to grow apart from me. That's the way I see it. And um. Anyway, we ended up divorced. So we did not evolve with each other, obviously. Uh, and there's no regrets. There's no reason for me to drag on and, and be sad about it anymore because there's nothing that can change what happened between us. We're done. We're split. We, he left. He didn't even want to separate. He just wanted a divorce. So from the day he said he wanted a divorce, we were signing papers within the week. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty fast. So, and then, so that happened at the end of September. I mean, and I was getting my divorce decree by November, like divorce, final divorce, it's done. So anyway, we did not evolve with each other. So moving forward, as I look for companionship for myself also, that's what I want is um, somebody that I can evolve with that will grow with me, that we will grow together. And then finally, the last, the third observation I made of my parents' long marriage is commitment. They stayed committed through everything, through all of the changes I certainly put them through. And um, also my mother was, um, she was kind of sickly, you know, towards the, towards the um, end of her life. Actually, she had a stroke fairly young. I, I think she was, um, she was probably in her 40s, I think like around my age, when she had her first stroke. And we thought we were going to lose her then, but she made it another 20 years or 15 years. Yeah, <laughs> she made it another 15 years. 
and she had diabetes and and heart disease and all of those things ultimately she she passed of a heart attack and um so my father stayed by her side through all of it like he stayed committed through all of the changes that happened in life from you know all kinds of things my mom had a big heart for real like she took in everybody and she wanted to take care of everybody <laughs> and it's so beautiful and I feel the same way too and um I I feel like I'm so much like her just probably because of course she raised me so I'm not I become everybody's favorite aunt after they've known me for a minute you know because I'm very stern but I'm very generous also so my mother was the same way. She was very stern and yet she was very generous at the same time. And uh, kids love me most times. Kids who don't love me are the ones that can't get away with stuff when I can see right through their game. <laughs> but my, my brother's kids, they love me. I love them too, though. And um, so the commitment that my parents had for each other, and especially as I observed my father, the way he served my mother through all of her um, challenges is um, a beautiful thing. And I want that. I wanna grow old with somebody or to have somebody who has my back like that. And you know, as you, we're, I'm older now, I'm not like a young spring chicken, 20 something, uh, getting married and, and and growing together with someone more than half of my life is gone now so any companionship or relationship i i start now is not deep or as deep and abiding as somebody that has been together for years and decades like my parents were um when my parent or when my mother passed away so that's one of the things i i miss about my marriage is that we were together for so long we were together for um 13 years so you can never i can never meet someone now and build the kind of rapport that happens in 13 years there's just no time you can't get that time back you know like i can't build 13 a 13 year relationship with somebody that i just met and so oh my gosh Wow, the camera fell. Maybe I shouldn't have been talking about that. <laughs> that is weird that the camera fell. So anyway, there's no way for me to build a new relationship with someone like that has a 13 year depth the way my ex and I had. And so moving forward, that's what I want is somebody that will stay committed through the changes that will not grow apart from me. That if there is a time when we're in a funk and we're in a bad place, that we will remain committed to each other and not feel like the best thing to do is to leave. I never want to experience that again. And um, so looking for a companion for myself, I don't want somebody that's going to walk. So I'm not interested in casual relationships or casual sex. Like I, <laughs> that's the annoying thing actually about being single is that people think that's what I want or guys that approach me, if they lead with sex, it's just not, I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm not interested in that. And um, I want somebody that will stay committed and not leave when stuff gets hard and not choose a different life. I can't take back what, what has been done. So I don't want what I had. And, um, so anyway, I don't want to be Debbie Downer. I'm still not Debbie Downer. <laughs> uh, so those are the three things that I observed about my parents' marriage that I want for myself when i if i find when i find companionship somebody that i share common traits with common interests and um you know just common traits like my parents i said had big hearts 
and they worked hard and I'm so glad I got those traits too. <laughs> that doesn't have to be the traits I share with my new person, but I would like it that we would have common traits. Second is that we evolve with each other. They evolved with each other to the very end. They stayed committed to each other too. So stay, they evolved and changed with each other through the changes of life. And then they stayed committed. And on my Facebook page, you know, I posted a picture of my parents and, you know, like a happy anniversary type thing. And um, I, and I said that my dad, I never heard my dad raise his voice to my mother. And if he did, I never heard it. And my dad replied and he said, he said something along the lines like, I never yelled at your mother ever, never raised my voice to her. And one day, if you live good, You'll see her again and you can ask her yourself. And then I replied, I don't need to, dad. I already know the answer. I don't need to ask her because I know he never raised. He, I don't even recall him raising his voice with me as, as naughty as I was. And as much of a challenge as I was, I don't even recall him raising his voice to me. He would get very upset and he would make his intimidating face, but I don't think he ever yelled at me. Does he even know how to yell? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, those are the three things. And I'm so glad that I am a product of my parents. Like I saw firsthand what love looks like at the foot of my parents. Commitment and love and staying together through the thick and thin. And I want that for myself. And um, I'm just glad that I got to see it, you know, like I got to experience it. And a lot of people don't have that. Never grew up with both parents in the home or, or if both parents were in the home, it was a little dysfunctional. <clears throat> a lot of people don't have what I had. So I'm super, extremely grateful. And I'm extremely grateful that my father is still in my life. And um, when I know he, I always tell him he needs a girlfriend and he's like, Nope, your mom was enough. <laughs> So, I don't know. I still think he needs a girlfriend. Everybody needs companionship. <laughs> That's what I tell him. But um, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Um, I'll see you next week. Have a great week, everybody. It's your girl, Nina Love.